in the uttermost uh, parts of the earth among the Gentiles. See, Jesus said, you'll be witness of me in Jerusalem. That was right there. Judea, that was the uh, provinces outside of Jerusalem, then the Jewish province. Then there was Samaria, the forbidden land of the tribes that we had split, divided from real, uh, Jeroboam. And that was Samaria, and the Jews didn't go there. And then he said, the uttermost parts of the earth. Well, we, we now think of the earth as China, Japan, the Middle East, the Far East. But in that day, the known world, the known earth, was very small. It was the Roman world. It, it was, and that was the uttermost parts of the earth, was the Roman world. And what that far? It wasn't like we're looking now clear across there to China, India. Uh, they were not involved at that time in the makeup of geography where Christ was concerned. Yeah. And uh, he said, you'll be witnesses of me. So here in this 24th uh, verse, he said, there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall, they hadn't yet, they hadn't deceived the very elect yet. The very, the, why did he say shall? That's nutrition. Because the very elect wasn't made up yet. Wasn't there. And they couldn't deceive something that wasn't there. The very elect was to come later when the apostles began to build the church. Uh, that is, they fitted in with the chief cornerstone, Christ, who shall, he said, I will build my church. Uh, it said, I'll, but I'll, Matthew 16 chapter, but upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not, but yet, yet in the second chapter of Ephesians, Paul shows clearly, he said when the Gentiles were coming in, down the latter part of that second chapter, he said, you're no, after he talked about Christ breaking the wall down, making both one, he said that you're no more foreigners. Uh, the Gentile wasn't to look upon himself as a foreigner. He he was brought into the same house. He was the he was the Japhet that was dwelling in the tent of Shem. Uh, the Jew came from the lineage of Shem. Uh, Abraham's seed came from the lineage of Shem. And that prophecy that Noah made way back there after the flood, he said, "Cursed be Canaan." That's the cursed seed. But he said, God will bless Japheth. And um, if you read the 10th chapter of Genesis, starting at the 5th verse, you'll see that the seed of Japheth, the isles of the Gentiles, were divided from that. The isles of the Gentiles. And they were divided from that seed. And they, he said, God's going to bless you, Japheth, and you'll be increased, you'll be enlarged, and the Gentiles became, uh, how many times over are, are they now the population of the earth compared to any other race, uh, the seed of the Gentiles? Uh, uh, far outnumbering Shem's seed. But he said, Japheth, you'll dwell in the tent of Shem, the covering tent. Well, that's what happened to the Gentile. He came in under the covering of Shem, though he was a Gentile. He would have never been connected to Christ if he had not had that covering or that tent. And if Peter had not led, been led in the 10th chapter of Acts down to the house of Cornelius, he would have never come into the tent. He would have never been under the covering. He'd never been connected. But by the time Paul said that in Ephesians 2, he was connected. There were thousands of Gentiles in the church in Corinth, Rome, and all those churches of Asia that Paul was ministering, he was an apostle to the Gentiles. He said, you're no more foreigners or strangers, but fellow citizens with the saints. What saints? The Jewish saints, with the saints of the household of God. And you're built, just like uh, everybody else is, the Gentile is, you're built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. Now, Jew and Gentile, 
next verse there, in whom the whole building being fitly framed together, it groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord. Next verse, in whom you also are built together, Jew and Gentile, you're built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. And that's why I've never bought some of what is called um, uh, British Israel teaching uh, that uh, was prominent a few years ago, um, saying that um, we originated our seed with God, our covenant with God was founded in the um, Anglo-Saxon uh, priesthood of the kingship and queendom of Great Britain and uh, uh, the, the, the Anglican countries that sprang from Great Britain and uh, that seed. Uh, I, I listened to some of that in meetings out west a few years ago. I know where my seed sprang from. I didn't come through Elizabeth's throne. It didn't come through the uh, seed that Prince Harry and Prince William is. That's their seed. But I don't have that seed. My seed came through Japheth, through Shem, and then through the Apostle Peter, and then through the Apostle Paul, those two apostles bringing those two sticks together of Jew and Gentile. And Peter was a, uh, had the gospel of circumcision, and Paul had the gospel of uncircumcision. And they, they went out and they did the work. And Paul said, now you're built it together for a habitation of God uh, through the Spirit. Uh, so uh, when I look at this verse here, the 24th verse, he said, that's going to arise false Christ. They're not here yet, and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect, the very elect. In other words, the first fruit Revelation, the 14th chapter, shows us who that first fruit is. That's the first fruit. And that means that's the choice fruit. That, that is the prime fruit. Yeah, that, 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 that's the best. That's the best fruit. And that doesn't mean there's not more fruit. God has more fruit than the first fruit. The first fruit is the very elect. That God has the elect. Uh, there's going to be those that will rise in the resurrection of the just at the end of the thousand years. That's, that's God's elect in the resurrection of the just. Uh, the wise virgins that make up the bride company, they're, they're, they're the elect of God. Yeah. Elect means chosen. You know, you're elected, you're chosen. And, but the very elect, the very elect is the first fruit. And uh, that number of 144,000 that John sees an angel sees uh, standing on the Mount Zion and having the Father's name written in their forehead, and uh, we know that name is Jesus, and there's a hundred, and I saw the Lamb who's standing. He's standing there. He's ruling. And John, in Revelation 14, uh, uh, the, the lamb, and I looked and lo, a lamb stood. He's sitting now. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Uh, he did get up. Stephen saw him standing. When Stephen was stoned and martyred, uh, he was so beloved of God, Jesus stood. He, he stood up from his throne. And he said, I see Jesus. Peter, Stephen did. And the heavens opened. I see the heavens open, and I see Jesus, the Christ, standing. My God, what an ovation. I got to get him to stand. That's an ovation. Pray, uh, that means, you know, when you we see somebody stand, you've got an ovation of respect. Amen. And Jesus was standing. Well, he's going to get up again now. He's going to stand again. And he's going to stand this time on the Mount Zion. Yeah. And go to the 12th chapter of Hebrews, and you'll find out who the Mount Zion is. Yes. Can be touched with fire, can be burned. It's a city of the living God, a numerable company of angels. Come on. It's a place where the spirits of just men are made perfect. Uh, it, 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 Mount Zion 
It's not a natural city like Philadelphia out here or New York. It's the heavenly host Praise of the overcomer called Mother Jerusalem, which is a mother. the heavenly city, which is the mother right. of us all. Uh, it, it's, uh, uh, Jesus will be standing. That's his foundation, the dead in Christ. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13 through 17. Brethren, I write unto you that you saw or not, even as those uh, others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them which sleep in Jesus, somebody's going to sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. He's going to bring them with him. And, and, and the, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Afterwards, we which are alive, and but he said, for the Lord himself, the Lord himself shall arise with the sound of the trumpet, the voice of the archangel, and the dead in Christ will come with him, the overcomers. That's that's uh, the city of Zion. That's the city of Zion. That's Mount Zion. They're coming with him, Mother Jerusalem. Now look, that's the very elect. I looked and saw a lamb, going back to Revelation 14, stand, and uh, with him, 144,000 having their father's name. And we know what the father's name is. It's no different than the son's name. The son had one name. He had title upon title, but he had one name. One name. Just one name. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And he said, John 5, 43, he said, I am come in my father's name. I am come in my father's name. My name is Marlowe. You don't want me to come in the name of Jones or Smith. No. If I'm coming in my father's name, there's only one name I can come in. Yes. I can't write a name on that check, but the name of my father, Marlo. Marlo, your name is your name. You got it from your father. It's your father's name. Yes. Brother, when you were begotten of the Holy Ghost and you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, oh, praise God. you became a new creation. Oh, yes. You were washed in the washing of the water by the word. You belong to a family. You're in a sonship that you have but one name. I don't care what your name was before. God doesn't see you as Rosales. God doesn't see you as, as Bush. God doesn't see you as Marlowe. Now I have another name. And that name is Jesus. And if I let him write it in my forehead, if I let him write it in my forehead, some people are not going to let him write it. They'll hear it. They'll be around it. They'll talk about it, they'll sing about it, but they'll never have him let him write that name. My God, I've got a zeal in me right now. I wish the church could be every night. I really do. Maybe it will be. Maybe before this is over, the Holy Ghost will command us to come together every night, every day, sometime during the day. We're approaching that time. We're approaching that time. But we're going to redeem the time seeing that the days are evil. The days are evil now, and we've got to redeem the time. And I, I can see that. It's mounting up. It's coming closer. Church is changing. We've got to, we're going to another elevation, another level. And uh, the, the, the thing that I see is so clear that this name has to be written, written. It can't do uh, I can't, you can't just get it. You can't just say it. Well, I'll say the name of Jesus. It'll be written in my forehead. No, you've got to have it written. You know how it's written? It's written there in the baptism of fire. It's written there in tribulation. It's written there in you being faithful, steadfast, unmovable, uh, always abounding in the work of the Lord. You're writing it. You're writing it. Every time you stand faithful, every time you withstand Satan, the carnal mind, every time you withstand evil, you're writing that name, and finally it will be written, and no man then can remove that seal. You're sealed. You're set apart. You're very elect. You're not just the elect. You're very elect. The elect can achieve a resurrection. The elect can come forth in the resurrection, uh, but it's going to be the very elect that will be in that company of the hundred 
and 44,000 when he comes back with them and receive them that are still on there. So they can't be deceived. Okay, let me slow down and let the questions be asked, our comments here. Brother Lee, I'll take yours. Well, you Bring the mic down, brother. I, I'm thinking about that elect lady. Would you fit that in, the elect lady? Yes, sir. Very that elect is right there for me. That is the elect lady uh, that Solomon mm -hmm. writes about. Mm -hmm. That uh, he it. writes about. John. Praise God. The elect lady. So it's fit right in. I mean, John writes about. John. Her. John writes about. Uh, uh, yes, person. John writes to the elect, the elect lady. lady in Second and, John uh, and Third John. And it says in her children. So she, she has all three. Children. Yeah, she has children. So uh, this this elect lady is going to have fruit. Fruit. Every overcomer and more will fruit. beget another overcomer. They, they, that that that's the children. Yeah, like John says, fruit begets fruit. Yes. And some have more fruit. Yes. And uh, yes, so well, that's what I was thinking about that. Into to the elect, <laughs> and you know, uh, carnal <laughs> preachers, yeah. carnal preachers. I heard one say on the radio. He said, John didn't want to publicize it, but he had a, a sweetheart in, in uh, the church there. Uh, and he said he wrote to the elect lady. <laughs> he wrote to the elect lady. I thought, fellow, I wish I could step in that radio and pull you out of that. And get you off the airwaves. <laughs> Talking as such carnal talk as that. <laughs> and when you talk of the fruit in Genesis, it talks of the fruits. It said the seed was within it. Yes. The seed, the yes, seed the seed was within it. Uh, the seed begets the seed right. because when Christ comes in you, he's the seed. He's, he's the yeah. seed, the holy seed, the righteous seed, and he's actually the seed of the woman. Yeah. He's the seed of that woman. He's yeah. the seed of that very elect, yeah. that elect lady. And that seed is within itself. It begets life within yeah. itself. Amen. Christ has life in him. You have life in you because you come from that seed. And you beget seed because you have life in you. First fruit to beget some first fruit. Amen. 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 It said, so uh, the, the, that's precious. Uh, Praise the, the, the very elect, the very elect, will not be deceived. The very, now you say, what's going to happen to the rest? Uh, the rest can be deceived. He said the very elect cannot. People in the church that don't attain to overcoming, they can, um, uh, they can, they can, they can um, uh, be deceived. They can be deceived. And, and I don't want to be deceived. No. So I have to become a very elect. They are to not be deceived. deceived. They are being deceived. By the thousands, they're being deceived. Today. People are being deceived by radio, television, books, articles. And if you don't want to be deceived, you get around the very elect, people that are overcoming, people that are striving to put the word in practice, striving to live above sin, striving to be an overcomer. Be around them. Go where they are. Uh, hear them, rub up shoulders with them, uh, you know, because then you become affected by them. Because they are overcomers, that seed in them will over help you and help me. Walk with somebody else uh, that unlike God, they don't care about God, or maybe they care in a measure, but not enough. Uh, they're not going to help you. They're not going to. All right, any other comments or questions right in here and what we've said? That, that living bread, Brother Morrow, was Jesus, wasn't it? Yes. That living bread. Out of your innermost being, I'm thinking where that's at, out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. Well, if you've got that innermost living seed in your life, you're not going to be deceived. No. Because that life, the living Amen. water, Amen. Amen. Goes. Amen. Just a thought ahead. Amen. Mm -hmm. Good, Brother Paul, that's good. Um, now, I want to involve our internet church in this. If you have a question about some of these Bible discussions or Bible statements we're making, um, you can call uh, the church office, 941-747-5893. Uh, 
I'm sorry, Brother Steve, do you have that information for them? You have it's that? there, no, and you. they can write it in on the YouTube site. And they can write it in. Yeah. And uh, we, we want you to um, have a part in what's going on here and uh, in, in the um, discussions or questions that you would have. Um, the, the bride elect, let's read on down uh, a verse or two more from verse 24. Uh, Behold, I have told you before, verse 25, 26, wherefore if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, do not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. Why did he use the desert? And why did he use secret chambers? He said, if these false prophets, when they come, they tell you he's in the desert. Well, Jesus used words to compare. The word desert describes a place of barren, living, no water, no water. We think of a desert, hot, burning sand. You go to Africa, you'll fly over hundreds and thousands of miles, some other. 1,500, 2,000 miles across a barren desert, burning sand, and um, no water there. Men die there if they get out in that and they can't make it through. Uh, don't, don't plan to take water trains with them, camel trains loaded with water. But uh, here, he said, if they tell you to go to a place that's a desert, no springs there. No living springs, no living wells. Uh, Isaiah 12 and 3 said, But with joy we will draw water out of the well of well, salvation. You know, there's a well where we are. Thank God there's the wells of Isaac. We've unstopped a few wells around here recently. And we've got, we've, we've reclaimed some wells. You know, we've unstopped some of the wells that Abraham our father did set. And uh, God said, and Isaac, uh, they were Isaac's wells, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And we've unstopped some of those. Yeah. Uh, that, but you, if somebody say to you, come over here to this church, and you go there, and that's a desert. Yeah. You don't feel the Spirit of God. Mm. You don't see the Spirit of God moving. Mm. That's a desert. Oh, don't go there. Mm. Jesus said, don't go to the desert. Then he said, if, uh, don't go over there when they say he's in the secret, the secret chamber. Uh, no, Jesus didn't have a secret chamber. He said, come unto me, all of you, that labor and are heavy laden. And, and don't, don't go to a place where there's no counsel. You go to a, a, a place where men speak what they want to speak, not subject to question. No counsel. They won't consider. That's a secret chamber. Yes. Whatever decision they make is going to be made in a secret chamber. And bread eaten in secret is pleasant. Well, yeah, that's Proverbs, Proverbs, isn't it? Yeah, Proverbs. Uh, Proverbs 9, is it Proverbs 9 or so? Uh, he said, um, and knoweth not that the dead, dead are there, there, and that her guests, are in the depths, guests are in the depths of hell. I've always said, thank God a guest can leave. Uh, we, we, you know, we can try to get some of those guests out. Uh, that we're talking about the horrid woman. You know, the woman, the adulterous religious system. The adulterous religious system uh, that, uh, I want to get that scripture, they eat their bread eating in circus pleasant. 